you have a chapter devoted to the topic of feature engineering in your book. What's the secret chip of engineering good features? Oof, oof, it's a lot of, um, that is like, wow, I feel like, how much time do we have? <laughs> 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 so and I think feature engineering is um is, is pretty hard. So I would say this like first I would look at the type of use cases. So there are certain use cases that where a lot of feature engineering can be automated. So for some use cases like um that use text or like images. So you can have like most of the data comes from like maybe like a blob of text or a big image. So which you can like input into a model and get out embeddings. So that kind uh, of feature engineering is pretty much automated. So what's the challenge for feature engineering is um, how how to engineer from more tabular data. So for example, for like fraud detections. So you have data coming from different sources. A lot of them are numerical. Um, a lot of them are not really, of course, they have some text as well. Of course, some people are treating the, the entire transaction as a blob of text. And you can um, just input into a model and get the embedding for that transaction back. Another approach is that you can look at a lot of users' activities and try to use the quantum like behavioral activities. So to like make predictions. So for example, a very simple example is that, um, say if you as an account holder has been only uh, spending, uh, make very few transactions, maybe uh, on average like one a day over the last six months, and suddenly in the last 10 minutes, you were farming, you were like doing 100 transactions. That's very suspicious. So that's, that's kind of like, measure the numbers of transactions you did in the last 10 minutes is a feature or measuring like what is the average amount of transaction you make every, you made you have made every day over the last six months is a feature so that kind of, of features you usually need to think about and usually require certain domain expertise people to come up with and they can blow up really really quickly so we see pretty commons in the companies we work with they have like thousands of features and we were talking to a few um, companies where the majority of their cost comes from future computation. Right, from future yeah. computation. Yeah. yeah, so like future engineering. So the, the traditional saying is that like data scientists try to just create as many features as possible because usually having more features will give right. the model better performance, but at the same yeah. time when, so we, we work in like real time machine learning space. So what it means is that we want to be able to help companies leverage fresh data to make better, like more accurate decisions, right? So for instance, on fraud detections, um, of course you can do like slow predictions. For example, like somebody steals a card, you win observe them for like 30 minutes and then make predictions. But like in that 30 minutes, that hacker, the scammer can cause a lot of damage. So we've seen often cases where people say like, they can just reduce the time from second to like milliseconds. They can save them a lot of money. Or another use case account, like email, email takeover for a business account. Uh, so if somebody get a hold of like Uber.com email or like Apple.com email, they can pretend to be that person and send out like malicious link to the rest of the company and which can cause a lot of damage. So like, if you can catch, maybe that's that person that's locked in and immediately say like, wait a second, two minutes ago, you were locking in from California and now you're locking in from like, I don't know, some like very random islands very far away. Then maybe, maybe it's suspicious. So, so mm. if you can leverage information very fast, then you can, save a lot of headache and like increase like more accuracy because now model can use like fresher data to mm -hmm. make like more accurate predictions for the situation right now. However, when you do things as a scale um, or like as a speed, you, you just have to spend a lot of money because so we see that um, we, we saw like some companies and not even that big, uh, but they do things very inefficient. Um, so they just store everything in memory, like data from the last three months in, in memory. And it ended up cost them like, I like have a million or like a million, of course, of course, depending on the scale, I don't feel like I just throw the number yeah. out there, but like a lot of money a year, uh, a month or a year. And we saw that like, we can come in and like, optimize that process to reduce like not 20% or not like 30%, but like 10X, like reduce the cost of that. 